In order for characters to reach their max damage potential, they need to be equipped with items called artifacts. In this video, we'll be going over the basics of artifacts, including when to farm for them, what kinds of stats and substats you're looking for, and tips on how you should build your character. Most people suggest farming for artifacts at either AR40 or AR45. This is for a couple of reasons. You can get 5-star artifacts starting at AR40, albeit with a 50% drop rate. AR45, this drop rate becomes 100%, making it more resin efficient to farm at AR45 than AR40, which is what I recommend. The most useful artifacts, in my opinion, are listed down below, in no particular order. This is primarily due to the stats they give from their set bonuses. Blizzard Strayer is busted for cryo main DPS, like Ayaka and Ganyu, as it can potentially give 15% cryo damage bonus along with 40% crit rate. Keep in mind that you should only use this set if your team revolves around the freeze reaction. If you're going for something like Melt Ganyu, Gemanawa's and Wanderer's sets are better. Emblem of Severed Fate is good for characters like Shelling and Raiden, as their elemental bursts do significant amounts of damage. The set itself gives 20% energy recharge and up to 75% elemental burst bonus damage. Noblesse Oblige is a good set for supports, like Bennett, as it gives a 20% bonus to elemental burst damage, along with giving 20% attack to all party members upon the equipped character using their elemental burst. Keep in mind that this 4-piece effect can't stack, so it isn't recommended to put multiple 4-piece Noblesse sets on all your supports. Iridescent Veronir is one of the main ways to reduce enemy resistance towards certain types of elemental damage. Along with buffing the animal damage of the user by 15%, it also reduces the resistance of the enemy by 40% towards the element swirled. Note that this means the set only helps buff the damage of swirlable elements, those being Cryo, Pyro, Hydro, and Electro. Keeping the earlier artifacts set in mind, if you don't have a specific preference to the character you play, the most resin efficient domain in the game is Momoji Died Court. This domain drops the Shimanawa and Emblem artifact sets, both of which are commonly used by multiple characters. Emblem is a good set for most off-field DPS and supports, such as Shincho, Raiden, Chunling, and Beidou. And the Shimanawa two-piece effect is also very useful, as it can be used as a substitute for Gladiator two-piece, something that's, norm that's normally used in many main DPS characters. Its four-piece effect is also used to great effect on characters like Ganyu and Hu Tao, in some instances. Any bad pieces received as a result of these of farming these sets can then be strongboxed and converted into pieces like those from the Noblesse and Gladiator sets. I don't suggest farming for Noblesse directly due to the existence of the strongbox system. Some other noteworthy domains include the Valley of Remembrance, Pig of Vindanir, and the Lost Valley, as these domains drop Viridus and Vernier, Blizzard Strayer, and the artifact sets with a two-piece equivalent to that of Shimanawas and Gladiators. The main stats you are looking for on artifacts is vary depending on the character you are building. For the Flower and Feather, their main stats are fixed at flat HP and attack respectively, so those can be ignored. Typically, a main DPS will have attack percent on their Hourglass, the corresponding elemental bonus damage or physical bonus damage on their Goblet, and crit rate or crit damage on the Circlet. This is to maximize their damage. However, this formula isn't followed for all main DPS characters such as Hu Tao, who typically runs a HP% percent or Elemental Mastery Sands. You might also see an Energy Recharge Sands, like in the case for Beidou and Raiden. As for substats, they can't coincide with the main stat of the artifact. For example, if you get Attack% percent as your main stat, you won't get Attack% percent as a substat. Every 5-star artifact has access to 4 different substats, and one of these substats increases every 4 level ups. The substat that is chosen is completely random, and the increase amount is chosen from a set of 4 different values, which is currently on screen. Crit rate and damage are typically the most sought after substats due to their damage increase potential, as well as artifacts being one of the primary sources of these stats. When building your character's artifacts, keep in mind that substats matter more than set bonuses, for the most part. An unmatching artifact with good substats will give more value than a bad matching artifact, as the set bonus will typically not outweigh the substat difference. In my opinion, only a few sets can afford to have one or more low substat matching artifacts, like the Viridescent and Blizzard Strayer sets. This is due to their 4-piece effects, which give 40% res down to swirlable elements, and a potential 40% crit rate. Keep in mind that some other sets can meet the requirements, but you either have to do a damage test or use a calculator to check which artifacts do more damage. 
And that's it for this guide. I hope it was informative and that it helped you out. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.